from the Itty Bitty Homestead Committee. Today I thought we could talk about rabbits as mothers, what makes a good mother, what makes a bad mother, how maybe to fix those problems, and when to give up on that rabbit. So let's hop into it. To me what makes a good mother in rabbits is a rabbit that can produce large litters and can take care of them with very little loss. I want her to produce a lot of milk and if need be taken fosters. I also want to make sure that they are providing for the kits and they aren't kicking them off the teat too early. I don't want to see moms who are kicking babies off at four weeks. I want to see moms who are still nursing at the seven and eight week mark. So for instance, Tati here has babies that are about to be weaned. I still consistently catch them nursing off their mom. And as you can see, these are not Californian babies. Tati is actually also a foster mom. So she not only raises her own babies, but she is happy to raise other babies as well. And even with all of these babies in here, she is able to produce enough milk and she has done a great job caring for them. I also really like the growth rate all of these babies have with the amount of milk she's producing. And she also has had a very, very low attrition rate. Um, she only lost one kit uh, in the entire time she was raising her babies. And the only reason I say lost was because it was a stillborn anyway. So all of her living babies have survived up to the eight week mark, which is amazing for a mother. Let's meet our first contender for a bad mom. This is two. Two has a very high attrition rate with her kits, and then she also has some really horrible grow out rates. Two has had three different litters, and those litters have ranged in size from five kits to eight kits. Her largest surviving litter of those sizes was only three. Two also has a really bad problem with producing and staying in milk. And because of that, her kits don't grow out as fast or they're stunted. Contestant for bad mom number two, this is Belle. And as you can see, Belle is once again in a singleton cage without her litter. Belle has a few problems, including stealing babies out of her own nesting box and leaving them to die on the wire and peeing on them. Belle is also really difficult to get pregnant, and in her first litter, she had a placental abruption and she lost all but one kit. Belle is a very, very bad mother. And finally, because I think three is a really good number, Sadie keeps producing casters. I will not explain anymore. I'm only half kidding. Uh, this doe is actually a really good mother. I just don't want casters anymore, and I just... I don't want casters, so I am looking to see if anyone is looking for a nice high roughest caster. If they want her, uh, she makes really beautiful uh, babies when bred to a black. Perfect roughest, great ring definition. I just, again, I'm getting out of casters, but if she's not producing what I want and she doesn't go anywhere else, she is going to end up in the freezer. Other problems we see with bad moms are things like abandonment, cannibalization, and aggression with older babies. So meaning as the babies get older, the mom gets sick of them and starts either attacking them or beating them up a bit. So we've talked about rabbits and their problems with motherhood. What can we do to fix these situations? And I'll admit some are fixable while others aren't. Let's start with the doe that either doesn't produce enough milk or she stops milking or she just has really slow to grow kits. And when we're talking about bad moms, remember I do have my three strike rule because sometimes does suck and they just need time to be a new mom and then after that they're really good. But what I'll do is if I have a mom that's struggling the first time, I always make sure we up her food and that she's getting enough to eat and that she has enough in her water bottle to consistently stay hydrated. We also provide all of our new moms with oats to kind of help with the extra fat and milk production of them feeding their babies. And most of the time that extra bit of feed and that extra bit of oats really does help. Another thing you can do is to limit the amount of babies she has. By breeding other does at the same time as her, if I know this doe can only handle five babies at a time and she has eight babies, what I'll do is I will take away three babies and foster them out to another doe. 
With that being said, sometimes this problem is not fixable and moms are just bad moms that don't produce milk. Um, something I won't do with a doe who isn't producing milk is I will not keep one of her does as something to replace her. And that's because it could be a genetic problem. So for instance, we are looking at culling this doe within the next week or so, and she does not have a single replacement from her. So this doe's line will end with her because it's not something that I'm honestly willing to deal with in our rabbitry. Solstice is a great example of what a really good mom is in that she's a great foster mom, she always produces extra milk, and she has a very, very low attrition. Right now, she is raising not only a litter of mini Rex, but a litter of Champagne de Argens as well. There are about 12 babies in here, and she is doing great with them. What can we do about a mom that pees in her litter box and is generally just not good when it comes to keeping babies in the nesting box and that kind of thing? You can shelf the babies. So basically you take the babies out and put them in a box in the house and you just kind of watch over them for the first few weeks of life until they're able to self-regulate their temperature. And what you'll do is you'll bring the babies out two times a day to feed from mom. This limits uh, them pulling the babies out of the nesting box and chilling and then also prevents mom from peeing on them. When it comes to moms that just are really hard at catching in a pregnancy, um, there are a few things you can do, and the reason why you see Belle again is Belle is one of the worst does when it comes to getting pregnant. You can try different bucks, you can try different times of the year, you can take the doe on car rides. Some does just don't want to be moms, they don't want to be pregnant, and they just don't catch for a multitude of reasons. Um, we've gone over before how to breed a difficult doe, and Belle is just the worst difficult doe I think I have ever had. I am going to pretend for a moment that one is a horrible mother. We all know that isn't true. One is a great mother, and despite the fact that she is stunted herself, she produces litters that aren't stunted. So she's actually one of my favorite does uh, who does produce. She's just small, and uh, she actually produces very large litters for herself. Um, her last litter was of 10 babies. We had two that were stillborn, eight survived. They're all doing great. And as you can see, they are pretty big compared to her. But um, we're gonna pretend she's a horrible mother. And I'm going to say that she is aggressive towards her babies and that she bites them and decides not to nurse them after four weeks. All of which isn't true. Uh, she holds on to her babies super hard and weaning her is always nerve wracking because I'm afraid she's going to get mastitis because she nurses them up to the point I take them away. But what I would do is if I have a doe that is aggressive with my babies and she's weaning them early, um, I'm going to take the babies from her and I'm going to offer them hay. Hopefully she is kicking the babies off of nursing after four weeks so that we aren't worried as much about GI stasis problems. Like it's still very nerve wracking, which is why we're going to offer straight hay for the first couple of weeks. Those early weaning weanlings are away from mom. But what I'm also going to try to do is I'm going to hold the mom and try to get the babies to nurse on her while I flip her over up until they reach probably about six weeks. Um, six weeks is my happy spot when it comes to babies being able to transfer onto pellet without much help from mom, just because of gut biome and gut germs that help the babies without causing bloat. With that being said, I'm not going to keep a mom who is aggressive to her babies for long, especially an early weaner. So if she's trying to wean her babies at two, three weeks old, and she's just being aggressive with them, it's not worth me keeping that doe in my program because it's just going to end up being um, a loss of a lot of babies. So I'd rather get rid of her and keep a better mom. Now, if you have a problem with the mom cannibalizing her babies, um, there's a few things that could be wrong. Um, it could be that the mom is scared of something and that she is trying to hide the evidence of their being babies so that she can survive to breed another day. Um, it could be that uh, the baby was already dead and again, she's hiding the evidence. Or it could be some kind of nutritional deficiency. Um, you can try giving bacon uh, right when the mom gives birth or right before. Uh, you can try taking the babies away from mom and uh, shelving them. 
Uh, so basically you bring them inside only for her to nurse off of them a couple of times a day. Or you can try putting her in a more secluded area, such as a garage or in the house, so she is away from everything, and you can create a more cave-like atmosphere. I think that covers all the obvious problems when it comes to bad moms and rabbits, but if I missed anything, please post the question in the comments. I'm more than happy to give you my side of how I fixed issues and problems or to give you kind of like a general answer. Um, with that being said, when should we give up on a mother? When should we call it quits on the mother being bad? Now, y'all know first time mothers suck. They just always suck. Um, I'm proof of that. My little oldest heathen runs around like a little whirlwind. I'm just kidding. She's amazing. Um, sometimes I'm really bad at jokes. With that being said, first time moms do suck. Um, what we want to do is we want to give the rabbit at least one more chance. And depending on the severity of it, we give her a third chance because we have a three strike rule. With that being said, um, I have been known to call a rabbit after the first or second time if there is a large enough problem. Uh, an example of that is with Stormy. If I have given three chances and I have a replacement, I would rather replace that dough with something better. I don't want to waste my time, my energy, and my resources going into a mother who isn't worth its weight in feed. With that being said, I do have an exception. Her name is Belle, and I don't like her. Um, the reason why we haven't called Belle, even though she's on strike 10, is we have been waiting, waiting for a replacement dough. So we might as well keep trying to have babies with her just to get it going. Our previous owner has had babies with her before and she hasn't had an issue. She just apparently has had an issue with us. So we finally got a litter out of her. I'm going to probably call her here soon as long as we have a doe in this litter she just had. And the reason why we talked about culling her in September is that's when we were going to get our replacement champagne from our breeder. Um, we were just waiting for them to get through their fair time. So. Either way, either this litter is a replacement for Belle, or we are getting a new dough. So, I'm only this much done with champagnes at this point. But I love Moose Man so much that I am hoping to goodness that Belle is an outlier when it comes to her attitude and her problems. But anyway, I want to thank y'all so very much for getting this far into the video. If y'all have any questions or any tricks that you have, please leave them in the comments below. I am always looking for new tricks when it comes to bad moms. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes I'm just sick and somebody has a solution that works amazingly. So, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.